Education Mobile, quality e-learning experience on the go. Welcome to Fusion Mobile e-learning clinic. My name is Sonia Laloa and I've been walking you through the chemistry course. In this particular lesson, we'll be looking at atoms, molecules, formulas and equations. So, in, we'll, be considering, we'll be considering the particulate nature of matter and the symbols of elements, formulas of elements and compounds, then we'll look at the particles, that, or we'll consider particles, we'll look at the size of a particle, and size of a mole, uh, uh, the mole of a substance, we'll also talk about the mass and quantity of a substance, we'll also look at the laws of chemical combinations, that's the laws guiding our chemical combinations, then we'll discuss valency and we'll conclude the lesson with chemical equations. Let's begin. So, in the last lesson we talked about matter and we said matter is, a, is anything that has mass and occupies space. Matter exists in the particle form. And why do we say that matter exists in the particle form? If you take a, a particular a, a rock, for example, you take a rock and you begin to break it down, you discover that you keep getting a tinier, a smaller particle of rock, a smaller size of rock, until you get to a certain level where it is so tiny, it is smaller than even sand. That is to show you that even a, a big substance is made up of tiny particles which come together to form up that one you're seeing. And this leads us to what the, um, the, the, this led the scientists to do further research on what the particles of matter contain. And they came up to the point of an atom. The word atom, it suggests that it is the tiniest, smallest possible thing that can be found. It simply talks, the word atom represents indivisible. So we will be made to understand that atom is the smallest indivisible part of an element. But we come to realize that even an atom can be further split into a simpler, the simpler forms. That is, we have the neutrons, the protons, and electrons. This will be discussed in a later topic in details. But we should know that an atom is the smallest part of an, a particular substance. It's the smallest part of a substance that, has, that exhibits the characteristics of that particular substance. We we'll also talk about the ions. The ions is a charged atom, an atom that has a charge. And that makes us to think about what we'll talk about. When, well, that will be spoken more about when we come to valencies. Uh, a neon is a, is a particular atom that has either gained or lost an electron. It has either gained or lost an electron. Let's talk about what um, we have as the molecule. A molecule. A molecule of a substance is, a, is the smallest part of a substance that can take part in any chemical reaction and can also exist naturally. A molecule of a substance is a part of a substance that can naturally exist. It can also take part in any chemical reaction. When we talk about water, we talk about the compound. In the last lesson, we talked about compound. We say a compound is a combination of different elements put together. So we talk about a molecule of water. A molecule of water contains two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen. This is one molecule. And also, a molecule of oxygen is represented as two atoms of oxygen. Well, oxygen does not naturally exist in the single, in the monoatomic state. We have some elements that exist in the monoatomic state. But we have other elements which also exist not in their monoatomic state. Some elements even exist in triatomic, diatomic, some in polyatomic states. So, depends on the nature of the particular element in question. That's what will determine what the molecular structure or molecular appearance of the element would be. Okay, we've talked about... Um, let's look at... Um, before we go on, let's take a short break. Uh, we want to see we'll, uh, some questions will be displayed on your screen. We want to see what you've understood from what has been taught so far in this lesson. Welcome back. In the, in the last, in the earlier, we were talking about the particulate form of matter and we we're talking about the different components that we can talk about when we talk about the particulate form, the tiniest form of matter. So let's proceed to talking about the symbols of elements. Symbols of elements. Well, imagine we have, we have over, over 150 different elements, about 200 of them. And imagine you having to call every element by their names every time. It can be cumbersome, it can be stressful, quite demanding. 
And this was one of the things that made us come about the idea of having chemical um, representations, that is symbolic representations for these elements. So let us calculate the mass of this particular compound as a whole. We have the mass of sodium to be 23, so the mass of um, NaNO3 would be, mass of sodium is 23, and we only have one sodium, so that's 1 into bracket 23 plus, we only have one nitrogen, so that's 1 into bracket 14 plus, we have 3 oxygen, that's 3 into bracket 16. So when we multiply out our bracket, we have 23 plus 14 plus 48. And when we sum them all together, this is um, 37, 37 plus 48 will give us 85. So the mass of sodium trioxonitrate 5 is 85. Um, we are not told whether it's grams or not, but basically the molecular mass is calculated in amu. It's calculated in amu. So let's say 85 amu. All right, so we can proceed to calculating for each of them. Now, the general formula for calculating the percentage composition of each of them does mass of the element in the question of this particular one will start with sodium mass of sodium divided by the mass of the compound and the compound is NaNO3 so that will give us what is the mass of sodium that's 23 divided by 85 multiplied by 100 since we're calculating in percentage and when we enter that information into the computer, into our calculator, our answer would be 27%. We can go ahead and do the same thing for nitrogen since we are asked to calculate for each. So that's mass of nitrogen divided by mass of Na. NO3 multiplied by 100 over 1, which is 14 divided by 85 multiplied by 100 equals, um, when you enter this information into the calculator, we'll get 16.5%. And then we can go ahead and calculate that of oxygen. That's mass of oxygen now if you take note of oxygen oxygen is not like the others there are three different oxygens based on what we have here three different atoms of oxygen so i prefer to say mass of oxygen multiplied by three divided by mass of the compound multiplied by 100 over one would give us, of course, from our calculations, we can just pick it from here. That's 40, that's, it's supposed to be 16 multiplied by 3 divided by 85 multiplied by 100 over 1. Of course, over 1, over 1 there. And when you enter this information into the calculator, the output would be 56.5 percent so this is how we go about calculating the components um, the mass the percentage by mass of components come elements of a particular compound so we've looked at how to calculate the percentage by mass of the constituents of a compound it's also important for us to note that there is something called the empirical formula the empirical formula is the simplest formula that can be used to denote or represent a particular compound. Now, the empirical formula might not be the same thing as the molecular formula. It might not be the same thing as the molecular formula. And what is the molecular formula? 
the molecular formula of a particular um, compound is the formula that represents the compound the exact way it actually is in real life. Most of the time, our empirical formulas and our molecular formulas are the same. As we have in oxygen, our empirical formula is O2, the molecular formula is O2. As we have in ozone, uh, water, our empirical formula is H2O, our molecular formula is H2O. But when it comes to substances as um, simple sugar, our empirical formula is CH2O, but our molecular formula is C6H12O6. So we see different, different things coming up like that. When we talk about hydrocarbons, we have alkanes, the alkynes. We see their empirical formulas are quite different from their molecular formulas. We, have, uh, we can have an empirical formula that would look that can represent a large proportion of them, especially the, uh, the alkenes, uh, alkenes, the alkenes. You see them, they go with the empirical formula CH2. But you can have different kinds of them. You see some of them will go with C2, H4, C3, H6, like that. Basically, the difference between empirical formulas and um, molecular formulas is that there is a proportion which can be used to multiply the empirical formula such that we can get out our molecular formulas. And that brings us to talking about the laws of chemical combination. Yes, I forgot to mention the Avogadro's number. The Avogadro's number is the number of particles contained in one molecule or one mole rather, one mole of a substance. It is represented with AV number and it contains a 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 23. That's the Avogadro's number. That's the Avogadro's number. 6.02 times 10 raised to the power 23, that's number of particles contained in one mole of a substance. Also, we talked about chemical combinations and we looked at four different laws. That's laws of chemical combinations. Uh, we talked about the law of conservation of mass, that is, the mass remains constant, the product and the, uh, the reactant have equal masses, that's the sum of their masses is equal. We talked about the law of definite proportions, that when chemicals react, they do so at fixed proportions. That is, it suggests that when we have water, water will always contain two molecules of hydrogen, one molecule of oxygen, and other compounds like that will maintain fixed proportions. We also talked about the law of multiple proportions. The law of multiple proportions says that when chemical, reaction, um, when chemical reactions occur, they do so at small number ranges. That is, you have a small number ranges. And we also talked about the law of reciprocal proportions. The law of reciprocal proportions, which suggests that when reactions occur with involving many compounds, whatever goes in, if you add up all the elements, you find them all coming all out. We also mentioned the empirical formula and the molecular formula. The empirical formula being the simplest form in which a particular compound may be represented. And the molecular formula representing the actual molecule representing the actual molecule and then we went to discuss valency we talked about valency as the uh, valence valency as a representation of the out number of electrons in the outermost shell of a particular element and then we discussed the chemical equations we looked at the product and the reactants of course the reaction occur and if there is any need for um, if there's any need for catalysts, catalysts to hasten the chemical reaction, we'll be discussing that in more details in future topics. All right, since we've discussed all these things, some questions will be, dis will be displayed on your screen to test your knowledge of what has been taught in this lesson. You are required to answer them. And if there's any part of this lesson that um, you seem not to have gotten, you can go over the video one more time. Thank you.